Moving house is a stressful task at the best of times. But for Taylor Dipple, today is particularly hard. The kids have realised that something's happening and something's off. Um, Bub's been very clingy. Six months ago, the 25-year-old and her partner Daniel were told their Bundaberg rental was being sold and their need to find a new home for their family of five. So we sort of thought, oh yeah, my partner's making good money at work. We can sort of afford a nice four bedroom home. Every single rental that is in our price range, we've been going for. And unfortunately, there is literally just hundreds of applications for every single rental. In the end, there was only one option. We have to move into a tent because there's no rentals. Uh, last few days, it's really been finalising the packing. Very emotional, going through all the kids' toys and trying to find ones that they were attached to, that we knew we couldn't let go. And then... And then finding the ones that they hadn't played with in a while. Um, and, yeah, putting them aside to sell or to... I actually donated them to a lady. Um, <laughs> On moving day, as the storm clouds roll in, the family decides to try the caravan parks one more time, rather than camping by the river, which is prone to flooding. Hello. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you had any camping spots available at all? No, we don't. Sorry. Hi, I was just wondering if you had any spots, camping spots available at all? Uh, what for having on? Uh, for as long as you offer, uh, for Let's two adults. Let's let come out and have a talk for adults, eh? I got hung up on. <laughs> Hours later, a small stroke of luck. No worries. You Thank you. Again, I'll see you soon. You see you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, so, cost? Okay. Two forty-four a week <laughs> for two weeks. Happy with that? Yes, I'm very happy with that. Uh. So the plan now is to pack up all the camping stuff uh. into the car, head out to our site and uh, set up the site. This is the family's new home. As long as we can get the setup right to keep them warm and keep them entertained long enough, I think they'll be all right. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to stay positive. <laughs> but keeping warm and dry is already proving a challenge. And there's another big complication on the horizon. Taylor is pregnant. She's due in October. I cannot imagine having a newborn in a tent. I'm not actually sure how I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, so what's keeping you going at the moment? The kids. Just trying to stay on track and be happy for them and just having a laugh because if I don't laugh I'll I'll just cry um right here in Bundaberg I've never seen anything like this before Jasmine Tasker helps manage the Angels Community Group a non-profit helping the homeless in Bundaberg where are you staying um I have a storage locker up next to the, the World Gym. Yeah. I thank Christ I got that at Christmas. This support centre opened last month, but it's already flat out. At any given time, there are a dozen people using the laundry or having a free meal. The centre also provides food hampers to around 100 families a week. There you go, mate. I have a good chair. Thank you very okay. much, mate. Okay, you take thank care. You. Thank you. Back in the day, I feel like growing up, there was a traditional look of what you thought a homeless person was and maybe how they got into that situation. Today is very different. We're having young families, we're having pensioners, we're having people that have jobs, have incomes, their kids are going to school and they are homeless because of this rental crisis.
across Australia, we've got a vacancy rate of 1.1% and we think anything below 3% is a tight rental market. I think it's not only affecting those families, but it also has an impact on regional economies because people won't move into a region to take up a local job if they can't find a home to rent. Kate Colvin works with homeless people in Melbourne and is part of a national campaign seeking solutions to the housing crisis. She argues a lack of social housing is driving up rents across the country, particularly in regional areas popular with wealthy tree changes during the pandemic. So it's not profitable for investors to create new rentals that will be rented at an affordable rate to someone on a low income. So we've got market failure in the private sector and at the same time we've got less government investment into social and affordable housing. I hope there are families in public housing watching this tonight. Because I want every parent to be able to tell their child, no matter where you live or where you come from, in Australia, the doors of opportunity are open to us all. The new Labor government has pledged $10 billion to build 20,000 social housing properties and 10,000 affordable homes in the next five years. But Kate Colvin believes an even bigger investment is needed. The shortfall of social housing across the country is more than 433,000 properties. So certainly um, we're very pleased to see the federal government back in the business of social housing growth, but 20,000 properties over five years is not as big growth as is needed. Back in Bundaberg, Ron Hughes and Julianne Tucker are not enjoying the retirement they had planned. Getting windy. Sitting across the road from the airport. Sitting across the road out, from the airport. Out opposite the highway. Looking like we're, we're really poor, but <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> but what do you do? The pensioners were evicted from their rental after a dispute with their landlord. They say they've been trying for years to find a new place, but are priced out of what was once an affordable market for retirees. They're all gone up in prices to like $450 to $500. And yeah, by the time you get there, they're all gone. Their neighbours at this rest stop have similar stories. Young families, uni students, couples, all unable to find rentals. So many young people are homeless. It's not right. It's just, Australia's supposed to be the lucky country. It's, it's very unlucky at the moment, it's not lucky at all. And for Ron, a lung cancer survivor and former rodeo star, he's still struggling to come to terms with his new reality. They called me Radio Ron in Townsville, in North Queensland. I was up there for 30 years. They wrote a few books about me, a book about me. Where I've been and what I've done in my life, I just can't believe this has happened to me. The couple has been heartened by the kindness of passing strangers. No, I thought you got all those dogs and I'm a dog lover, so here's some dog food. Okay, thank you. Know. But all they really need is a home. I keep looking and hoping there's a future. I hope something will turn around. That's all i got is hope. If you haven't got hope, you get got nothing. <laughs> so. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.